Welcome back to another vlog review. This time, in honor of International Women's Day, I'll be talking about a prequel to a great movie that featured a female protagonist, a female antagonist, and the wise female mentor. So here are my thoughts on Oz the Great and Powerful. If you liked the effects of Alice in Wonderland 2010, the acting of Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, and the direction of Spider-Man 3, then you might enjoy this movie. Small-time magician Oz, as played by James Franco, is tired of being a second-rate illusionist. But in a twist of fate, or should I say twister of fate, he ends up being dropped in the land of Oz. He's mistaken for a prophesized great wizard by the good witch Theodora, as played by Mila Kunis. While Theodora immediately believes Oz to be the one that will liberate the land from the tyranny of the Wicked Witch, her sister, Evanora, as played by Rochelle Wes, isn't quite as accepting. She demands that Oz go on a journey to dispatch the Wicked Witch, but what he finds is not exactly what he'd been told. Now Oz is forced to live up to his title as a great and powerful wizard, facing off with the true threat to the Land of Oz. While a prequel to The Wizard of Oz could have been really interesting, this film was little more than a vehicle for 3D effects. The scenes were obnoxious, constantly throwing images at the audience and messing up the pacing. The director, Sam Raimi, has had several successes throughout his career, but lately he's been more misses than hits. In a lot of ways, it felt like the Star Wars prequels. The filmmakers knew how the movie should end, but no clue how it should start or what should happen during. The original Wizard of Oz was a new take on a classic hero's journey, but with Oz the Great and Powerful, the Oz character doesn't experience any real change. He starts off as a greedy coward who, while not meaning any real harm, is a compulsive liar. And guess what? That's how he is at the film's conclusion. Of course, that might just be how James Franco thought he was supposed to portray him. I'll just come out and say that I don't like James Franco as an actor. I'm sure he's an alright guy, he just can't act. Which is a huge problem when he's the focus of the film. The Oz character is a sleazy, womanizing fellow, but also a bright, charming con man. This is supposed to quickly set him up as an unlikable, unlikely hero who will eventually win the audience over. But to Franco, this translates out to grin like snidely whiplash for the first half of the movie, then look really contemplative for the second half. The other actors don't fare much better. Mila Kunis' character was a little on the crazy side very early on. She instantly loves Oz after a day with him and instantly hates Oz a day without him. It makes her character seem unstable, which is only an excuse for making her do drastic things with little prompting. Even going as far as, oh, I don't know, being duped into becoming wicked by her obviously evil sister? Kind of like... Oh yeah, did I mention the sister also has lightning powers? Yeah, see what I was saying about that whole Star Wars thing? But back on topic, along with all the other underused casting, the small CGI porcelain child, simply called China Girl, had the most potential and was kind of the biggest letdown. Her first scene was the most emotional, most endearing out of the entire film. The amount of detail and beautiful rendering put into her creation is awe-inspiring. They set her up as a very tender, soft-spoken character, then completely tossed the idea. She becomes a generic, spunky kid sidekick and little more. Overall, I can't recommend this movie to anyone over the age of 10, which is odd considering how many interesting ideas the film features that could appeal to an adult audience. There are some great dark elements and callbacks to The Wizard of Oz, but there is just too much cheesy 3D gags. The dialogue ends up stunted and boring, the characters uninteresting with muddled motivations, and the result of it all is a prequel that didn't need to be made. The Wizard of Oz franchise has had no shortage of sequels, miniseries, side stories, but this has to be the weakest addition to them all. That's it for me for now. Until next time, I'm Darren with Moving It Blender.